This is just like vlog footage. It doesn't have to be professional looking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Where are you right now? We're over here on this walking path um, down scenic, down the border of New Mexico. There's scenic all the way the fuck down over there. Let fight till the blood drip. Come and try this. Where does love fit with the lust? I'm abiding. How my kiss get turned into dust? Ivy feel with rising, paralyzing, blinding, swipe me, find me, hiding, stomach lining, feel with lightning. What's this dynasty you're guiding? You're my trident. I'm Poseidon. I am. I am. I am. I am ghost. <laughs> flying. Flying. Flying ghost. Yeah, that's like what I have so far. So Brandon. How long have you been making music? It's been a long process in the making. I would say it started all when I started writing poetry. I mean, I always had a fascination with words. I was like, poetry is cool. I remember reading poetry in school. I was like, I could do that. That's just easy. And then I tried a little bit and I was like, all right, whatever. And then when I got into my first relationship, that's when I really got heavy into poetry. I was like, oh, I got so many feelings. I got so much shit to say. How do I express it? Poetry as a release of expression for every sort of thing that I went through and then eventually I met this man named Bradley Culpepper he fucking saw the potential on my poetry he's like why don't you put it over a beat it's basically a song I'm like that's true and then that was about 2016 2017 end of 2016 maybe and, and what year is it now it's about to be 2020 it's 2019 so you've been doing this for like three to five years maybe since oh, the see, very very beginning of poetry what his masterful let's Let, let's, okay. let's start with uh your um, of felon, rebel, for rebelling, repellent of heaven like 24 7 develop my essence inside of a death wish emotions i cannot finesse no rest i contest with the chest full of bullets on deck wicked don't rest a soul is repressed how can you live a life trouble possessed feel like a guest this body infest all of my thoughts i'm insane at the best who is your master? Who is your past? The devilish emotions I cannot finesse. Yeah. No rest. I can test with the chest full of bullets on the deck. Wicked don't rest. I sold. So, what we just did is we just got here to the producer's crib. And what we normally do is we dap it up. What's up? How you doing? Pretty good. Fuck yeah. Liberty, liberty. And then we come up in here and we... He breaks down what he did to the song to make it sound badass as fuck, but we're not going to get into the process. Just know it's like the Wizard of Oz, and there's like the floating head behind the curtain. That's all you need to know. And then after that, he puts the song onto the hard drive, and then he sends it through to Gmail so I can listen to it on the way home. And then after that, we fucking, we start, we get to it. We get to the fucking, the singing and the vocals and the magic and the layering and all that fun shit, which is what we're about to do. Can we do two songs today? So we're gonna do one song today. It's gonna be cool. Y'all get to see uh, the singing and the layering. See you scratching that for that selfish. I don't know if y'all are interested in that, but y'all gonna satisfying see anyway, so. me? Is it satisfying you? And um, whenever I have like an idea for a harmony or a melody, I just come in here and I record it. And then that's why I have all these fucking things in here. So let me see. Since you started your studio recording process with Eddie, uh, how um, how has that affected the development since you began? Um, it's funny. Um, I had a playlist on my SoundCloud, SoundCloud called My First Few Tracks, which was my first nine tracks by my first producer. And it's funny because all those tracks I ran through in one fucking take. And a lot of people don't know that. I mean, you could tell it's one take. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. Like, my first song, Midnight Flow, my first single ever, like... It came out really badass considering it was my first song ever and it was one take. And then I met Eddie nine songs after that. He would like really encourage me to be better at delivering my lyrics and stuff because when I first I didn't really know how to sing, I didn't really know how to rap, I didn't even know how to like properly use my breath or anything. And then he kind of like showed me like he guided me into a path. He's like, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Are we doing the falsetto now? I mean, we can. I have enough of the other one. Okay, yeah. I guess we can do it. You are 20 years old. You live in Alamogordo, New Mexico. You're making music, doing your thing, trying to experience life, trying to go with the flow and see what happens. 
staying motivated, staying encouraged, doing the best you can, just like anyone should. Where do you see yourself or where do you see your art taking you in the next couple of years? Let's say two to five years, if you keep going the way you're going. The people that I see that inspire me, that are doing like actually like successful living off of their craft, I look at what age they are and they're usually in like their late 20s, 30s. And um, I take a lot of motivation and inspiration from older people. I've always been surrounding myself by older people because even if a person has been on this day one earth longer than you, they still have more experience on this earth. So there's always something to learn from everybody, from every environment, everywhere you go. There's always something to learn. You just have to be open-minded and waiting for the opportunity because the opportunity is that selfish. Right? Yeah. Oh, for the parts where I wanted the vocoders, I wanted to have a separate background vocal just for those parts. All right. Let me see. Oh. We just got done recording, unloaded. Y'all ain't even gonna hear the song until way, way later in the in the year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So seasonal affective disorder. This new project. It was amazing. Um, things are happening. Tell me about that. It was kind of crazy how it all kind of came together because like, I was looking up wintry words because I, I love autumn and winter and I was like, I want to make songs with these concepts imbued into them. So I was like looking up wintry words and then I came across this list on Wikipedia and it came across some seasonal affective disorder and I was like, sad? For real? And then I came across all these other words and I was like, that's cool. I, I think I'm going to use that as a fucking concept for an album. I'm working on volume two right now, Seasonal Affective Disorder, and I think it's even better than the last fucking, oh dude, it's crazy, because it's more, it's more focused than the last one. Because I think I'm starting to find my sound more and more and figuring out what I really want to fucking do with music, you know what I mean? I try to play off the idea that people love to overanalyze shit, like Stanley Kubrick. If you watch his movies, he plays on the idea that people love to overanalyze shit. And I love that, that's a dope concept. So I try to implement that into my music. So it's really doing stuff that will never be noticed just because you can do it. Sometimes people notice what I'm doing, but a lot of the time people don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And it's like, it's cool, they think it's just music, they think it's just a song, but I'm building universes in my songs. Since it's becoming the end of the year, I'm trying to fucking do shows and stuff. I'm looking at getting some equipment. Yeah, I hope like by next year I'll be doing shows and stuff. That would be insane. Could you imagine? I'll have Henry over here fucking help me. <laughs> oh, dude, that would be crazy. Taking pictures, what? recording you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even like fathom. This is like some dream shit.